Hi, my name is Phil DeLuna and I'm running to represent the people of Toronto St. Paul's as a member of parliament in the next federal election. Today I'm talking with my good friend Helen about Student Energy, an organization that helps to increase student engagement and youth involvement in the energy transition. Disclaimer, me and Helen last spoke before I had my hair cut, so you'll get to see and compare and contrast me with long hair and me now. I hope you enjoy the talk. All right, so today we have a very special guest. We have Helen Watts, who is a director at Student Energy in charge of outreach and community organizations. And she does so many talks at so many events. She was just at the, the last uh, Clean Energy Ministerial, um, which is so cool. For those who don't know, it's an international event of ministers uh, in, around the world internationally to talk about climate change. Um, so Helen, thank you so much for being here. And I'm excited to just talk. Uh, do you maybe want to start off with an introduction to yourself? And thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, so I'm Helen Watts, as, as Phil introduced. So I'm the Senior Director of Global Partnerships at Student Energy. So what that means is um, I do a lot of work with kind of building global coalitions of actors who can work with young people really collaboratively um, to try and advance our climate and energy transition agenda. Um, and so kind of my background in coming to student energy i've been with the organization for four and a half years um, before that i was still in youth empowerment work um, as you know a young person still a young person now but even younger then um, really passionate about the sustainable development goals about um, advancing kind of global community building to you know create more equality and um, and more advancements of human rights issues around the world and i actually don't come from an energy background so for me going into um, student energy was an interesting experience in and of itself, because I think it really speaks to the fact that more and more young people are um, seeing climate and energy as kind of universal issues where it doesn't matter what kind of background you come from, what technical expertise you have, um, there's kind of something for everyone to take on. And so I was definitely empowered in that way to join the organization. Um, I actually came from like a migration related background, which is really interesting. So uh, yeah, I think um, definitely I came in with a lot of, I wear a lot of different hats now, but came in with kind of a unexpected um, experience kind of background. And uh, it's been great kind of getting to pave the way for more young people from diverse backgrounds to come into the space. That's awesome. And you know, I, it's interesting that you come from in the immigration background because with climate change and energy, those things are becoming more intricately linked as time goes mm -hmm. on. And we'll only continue to see, you know, climate refugees and these sorts of things happen. Um, I mean, right now in the West of Canada with all of the, the, the heat dome that's that's you know making its way through the country, and I think I saw last night it was like over 230 deaths um, in, yeah. in British Columbia. Um, so you know I I'm I think it's so uh, important that uh, and exciting that youth are starting to be more involved and politically active and engaged. Why do you think that for youth particularly, climate change is so important? Yeah. Um, for, I mean, it's interesting. I, I think about it, like you were saying, kind of in the context of issues like migration, other global challenges. It's almost kind of this tragedy of the commons where um, it doesn't feel real to you until it's kind of in your back backyard. And if it's not impacting you directly, it doesn't feel like it's your responsibility. And I feel like young people kind of given the way that we have managed or we've kind of grown up in this age where we're so connected to young people, other young people around the world, you know, in our community, but outside of our communities as well, there's this kind of greater sense of, of global community and kind of global responsibility um, or national responsibility, you know, kind of de depending on what your, what your kind of community um, circle is, uh, there is this sense of interconnectedness and a sense of community and responsibility to kind of take care of each other, to build, build back better, I guess, from, um, from, you know, the generations before us. And uh, I think what is also really interesting to me in my work to see is that young people don't see these issues in a silo, you know, young people who are part of our networks, who are working on energy transition issues, working on climate change issues, um, they're also involved in social justice and racial justice in their communities. They're also involved in food security, um, you know, water security. And so there really is this, this collective understanding that this is a systems challenge that we're working to kind of chip away at. And that's a slow burning change that we're trying to make. But 
Um, if we don't start now, we're not going to get to where we need to be for the next generations after us. And so I think we, we see this kind of long game that needs to be played and we see this opportunity to really tackle all of these interconnected issues that we care about. Um, and we do feel this responsibility, you know, with how connected we are to each other to really build something that is inclusive and, and, um, and just improves the lives of everyone and, and of our planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really like what you said there about how young people don't look at these things in silos anymore. And I think that's so true. Like the, with the rise of social media and internet, we are as connected as we've ever been before. But beyond that, even within disciplines, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. environmentalism isn't just about the environment. It's also about social justice. It's also about society. It's also about racial justice. And I, you know, running with the Green Party, a lot of times people have the stereotype that the Green Party is uh, you know, a one issue party and only talks about the environment without knowing that, to your point, everything is connected and it's all a systems issue. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious from your point of view, um, I, I hear all the time questions from other youth who are asking, you know, what can I do? What can a youth do? And I always, my answer <laughs> is unfortunately, as a person, like as an individual, it's very limited, but collectively um, we have a voice. So what, what do you say to people who ask you that same question? Like, what, what's the number one thing that we can do to make an impact? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really, it's a really frequent question that I get asked. And it's, it's a tricky one because it really depends. I think my first piece of advice is always um, really take time to reflect and learn and find out what issues are really um, closely aligned with your personal beliefs and values. Um, Cause that's really important. It's, I find a lot of paralysis happens when we kind of get overwhelmed by the scope of the challenge and all of these different issues that are so, you know, are equally important and all need to be addressed. And it almost feels too overwhelming to kind of jump in and get started. So my advice is always try and really understand like what intersection of these issues is really meaningful to you. And it's not to say that you can't play in these other issues too, but you know, you're going to have to being involved in system change work means being able to kind of sustain yourself um, and this is kind of where personal well-being comes into play is you're not, you know, we're going to try and avoid burnout. You can't tackle everything at once. You've got to pick your, pick your first pathway. Um, and like you said, you know, there's, um, there are so many communities where you do have strength in numbers. It's also really important. And I think young people do really embody this. Um, we're starting to shift away from this really kind of technocentric, almost even like entrepreneurial mindset where there was such an emphasis on needing to start something new and needing to kind of be successful as an individual in starting something new and presenting a solution. And I think we're starting to move away from that where um, yes, there's strength in numbers and it's important to have a sense of community and be involved in collective action. Um, but there's also a huge, it's also hugely important to build off what's already being done um, and not feel like you need to kind of go in and introduce something entirely new. A lot of even the ways that we're talking about innovation now when it comes to climate and energy is around um, innovative ways of applying existing solutions, not even innovative ways of coming up with new solutions. So my advice, uh, maybe to break that down a little bit further is find out what you're passionate about, find the communities and the groups who are already doing work on this area um, and come in and kind of offer what you have to offer um, to that space. And as a young person, oftentimes we really question what is it that we can really bring and what can we offer, especially if we don't come from a technical background. But you being a young person in and of yourself, that is hugely, hugely valuable. We need that systems thinking approach that we inherently bring, that kind of way of seeing new ways that solutions could be applied, new ways of kind of thinking about intersections of issues. And so that mindset and your passion and your energy bringing into that space is so important. Um, so kind of show up and, and get ready to work with, with the communities that are already working on those areas. Um, and then if you come up with your own idea after that, that's fantastic. And like, go off and do that as well. But I think it is important to first learn from, you know, the actors who are already doing work in that space. I, I think that's such a good message to share, which is really about recognizing what's been done before, trying to learn from that and then build upon it. I mean, I think as young people, there's often, as you said, the urgency and the need to try to get out there and make a big impact right away when really it's about understanding what the foundation and the state of the art is before trying to do something. Uh, and I think that's a message that gets lost, especially when uh, in social media and on the internet, when it can feel like things are moving so quickly and complex issues are reduced to just sound bites or tweets. Um, and you know, I actually think that for a lot of young people who are active on social media and are advocating for things, that's good, but you also have to follow that up with real world action in my view. And I, I, I almost feel that, you know, um, being out there on social media uh, and, and, and saying these things 
is useful, but there's already so much out there. So like, what is the, what do you bring to the conversation that's new, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, to, uh, to this point, you work, um, as do I, with a lot of people who are older than us. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know how about you, but I definitely have felt at times within my career that uh, my opinion was overlooked or maybe not taken as seriously because of my age. Um, what, do you do you do you see that as well? And then uh, maybe a more um, specific question is: How would you advise youth to make an impact when so much of our society and so much of the institutions are run by people who are older, and potentially all these decision-making tables, youth aren't necessarily represented there. So how can you make an impact from the outside and on your in your own personal experience? Have you felt that youth was a barrier, uh, especially in certain conversations? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in my personal experience working in this space, um, like, you know, couldn't count on two hands the number of times that I felt kind of the token young person in the room that's been invited to kind of represent this kind of beacon of hope for our future. Um, and, you know, maybe even like introduce like an opening speech and then the panel actually starts. And so it feels like kind of the work is actually beginning after you first kind of inspire the room. And it's not to say that there aren't good intentions behind that. I think that I've always kind of gotten a sense that there is, there are kind of intentions to really make sure that young people are centered and recognized for their contributions and their role. But I think there's a lack of understanding of, of how to do that in a real meaningful way. And so my, in my, my advice for young people um, looking to, you know, and this is not necessarily from a career, um, from kind of the point of starting off your career, but as a young person who's wanting to kind of be involved in, let's say, um, consultation processes or corporate sector roundtables, you know, spaces like that where young people have historically been really underrepresented, um, if possible, try and find an institution that you trust in terms of how they advocate for meaningful youth engagement doesn't, you know, doesn't have to be student energy. There's lots of others that do it, but student energy, for example, we have these kind of principles that we've set out of meaningful youth engagement. And so, you know, there's a certain threshold at which we um, have a hard line around youth need to be compensated. And that's a really important, um, uh, it's a really important commitment by an actor to recognize young people's values and contributions as worthwhile kind of investing in and, and putting real dollars behind that. Um, you know, regardless of, of you know how important it actually is for young people itself, which it also is. It you know it, it creates a more uh, inclusive playing field if young people are financially supported to participate, because that means that certain young people who wouldn't be able to participate if if they weren't compensated can be in that room. But it's also just a really important kind of almost at a symbolic level, really important um, commitment from the actors as well to to value that um, value their role. Um, there's other principles within that as well, like um, make sure that you have accountability mechanisms. So um, how are you going to be tangibly following through on what young people have contributed to that space? Um, and that's something that we'll advocate for and actually kind of co-design with organizations who genuinely don't know how to do that. And that's totally fine. Meaningful youth engagement is not a mainstream practice. So it's mm -hmm. it makes sense that there is a lack of understanding of what that means. But that's where we come in and we're like, okay, well, if you're willing to sit at the table with us and co-create that process of accountability and follow through mechanisms, um, then we will kind of, we'll bring our youth into the space and know that, you know, they're going to be entering into that with that kind of social contract almost. Um, and so, yeah, if, if, I hope that answers your question, but um, I would say that's where we've kind of evolved to at this point from our own personal experiences, like myself, Meredith, our executive director, others on our leadership team who have really been involved in quite kind of symbolic and superficial ways in the past, we've started to learn from that, kind of paid attention to how are other people being engaged in that space? How is that different from us? How can we then kind of develop these principles and then become this advocacy body that can, um, that has a bit more institutional kind of power behind it as, as an organization that has a bit of a reputation now in Canada and, and abroad um, and kind of put our weight, full weight behind advocating for these principles for youth so that they don't need to feel like we have, that they're kind of standing alone and don't know what to ask for and what not to ask for um, in that situation. Um, it's a slow road. I would say I'm starting to see a mindset shift or a culture shift um, within certain spaces when it comes to meaningful youth engagement, like it's starting to just become more intuitive in certain sectors mm -hmm. and others not as much. Um, and this is mostly speaking at a, at a global level, but for example, I used to be invited to participate in 
um, like design processes for uh, energy access solutions, like kind of at the drop of the hat, like maybe like a couple of weeks before the process was about to start. Now, kind of four years later, I'm engaged like months before it starts. So I can actually be part of designing what that process is going to look like, really have time to be thoughtful about how I engage, how I engage my network and bringing their perspectives into that space. And so even that, you know, how early are you engaging young people? Are they the last ones that you're sending out invites to? Um, those are the types of questions uh, that, you know, I want sectors to ask um, because it's where I've started to see a little bit of change happening um, and with certain actors that I work with. Mm -hmm. what, what I really like about that story too is it, it shows that progress takes time and you have to, you know, you said four years from when you were being invited to these things last minute to now when you're involved the, at the decision-making table and the process from the start. And I think it speaks to the fact that it, it's all about building up that reputation, building up that competency, um, building up the trust between, you know, you, yourself, your organization and the, the stakeholders, the actors that you're interacting with. And I think that's something that, um, maybe are, is lost on some people. It, it goes both ways, right? Like it, you can't, as a, as a youth, you can't just expect um, people to respect or trust. You have to earn that as well and, and be present and be there. But the thing that I'm finding that's really exciting is that youth want to be there more and more at that table or having being part of that conversation. Um, I'm curious, uh, maybe a little bit more on a personal level, what motivates you and, and what are you most excited about right now? Yeah, um, so what motivates me is definitely young people around me. So my team at Student Energy, but also my community, like there's a great, um, there's a great interconnected ecosystem of young people in Canada working on, um, on climate and related issues. Um, and there's been such a a great kind of effort to like connect this community and you know bring people into projects that we're working on make sure people are aware of what we're working on kind of create this very interconnected ecosystem that's really motivating for me because i think um what i've seen from learning about kind of canada's trajectory on climate and energy issues is that so many actors have kind of worked in silos been very disconnected from each other and so you'll see kind of an, an institution like a a policy think tank pop up, for example, or policy kind of think tank process pop up. And then kind of the same thing happens a couple of years later. And there's no, it's not clear why those two kind of exist separately. Um, and I've seen this kind of pattern happen again and again. And I feel like, like, I feel quite motivated by the fact that there's so much intention and effort right now within the youth community across Canada to be connected, to learn from each other's work, to be aware of each other's work, that I feel like we're maybe starting to break that cycle. Mm. And, um, for me, that's really motivating because it feels like we can actually start to see real progress as we build on each other's work. Like I was mentioning before, you know, not kind of having to continually put so much time and energy into um, creating new processes and new things when existing kind of practices uh, are kind of already exist and a lot more space for collaboration. So I get really motivated by collaboration, by this connected ecosystem, um, by this kind of growing appetite from actors to meaningfully engage young people. Um, that's really motivating to me. Um, I also get really motivated by like the way that we're seeing issues differently now, like the, the intersection of, of, you know, for example, like we were saying before, migration, climate, energy access, that's an intersection of, of those issues that I had never heard about, like kind of talked about in a real way until, you know, only a few years ago. And so I get really motivated by just the way that we're able to see, see problems differently and in a more interconnected way. Um, and I forget your second question. I'm sorry. <laughs> what's, the, what's the thing that you're most excited about right now? Oh, yeah. What I'm most excited about. Um, I mean, maybe I'll like put in a little plug for student energy. Um, we're, yeah. We've just launched <laughs> we've just launched a really exciting new initiative for us. Um, we've committed to a capital raise of $150 million over the next 10 years for youth-led solutions in clean energy. Um, and again, kind of clean energy as this interconnected issue. So we're expecting a lot of really interesting, innovative um, ideas to be supported through this initiative. Um, but it's an initiative that isn't just about kind of raising capital for young people, which is hugely important. It's a big, big, big gap in the space right now. But it's also paired with this coaching and training ecosystem um, to support young people with having the skills, the mentorship, um, the connections that they need to, um, to kind of pursue the pathways that they want to um, on, on delivering their clean energy solutions. So whether that's kind of in entering the sector as an employee, whether that's starting their own business, whether that's kind of community activism, 
Um, and so we're kind of really seeing this, um, this initiative as a way to pair the funding that young people just inherently do need and, and we need to make this a more inclusive playing field um, with that coaching and training element. So we're really excited. We just launched that on Friday last week. Um, it's going to be a huge project, but um, it's really going to, you know, I think just, just drive a ton of really exciting initiatives. Our goal is 10,000 youth-led clean energy projects. Um, by 2030. Uh, so stay tuned for that because that will be a, a big one. <laughs> That's exciting. That's really exciting. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I, I'll end this uh, conversation off with a question that I, I think is really interesting or that I'm curious about, which is people typically think that youth don't vote, that they're not politically engaged. Um, and the numbers bear that out. W why do you think that's the case? And what do you think we can do to change that? Yeah, that's a really tough one. Um, I think it's a combination of factors. I think that um, communication efforts around issues that are important to young people, but coming from that kind of policy standpoint, so that that kind of, you know, whether it's um, a party communicating their stance on um, social justice or racial justice issues, a, a party kind of communicating their stance on climate and energy issues. Um, I think the communications around that has has fallen short of what young people need to really feel heard and like they can kind of see themselves represented in a party or in um, in a set of kind of priorities by by any given potential leader. Um, so I think the communications and I you know for climate more broadly I think that the communications effort has just been such a an important but yet underdelivered kind of area of getting building salience around climate issues um, more broadly in Canada. Um, and I think if young people really felt that they understood exactly what the concrete plan is from leaders that um, that they're thinking about supporting, I think that that would be a huge motivator for them to show up. Um, and this also applies to things like green jobs, for example, like green jobs is this kind of like vague, ambiguous term that is used so often by um, leadership that young people, again, don't really know what that actually means. Mm. And so I think young people are really looking for um, to get it to kind of like cut through the mist a little bit more on the messaging that they're hearing from, um, from, from leaders. And I think that that's potentially a way to really motivate young people to show up more. Um, Cause I do think that a lot of it does come from kind of disillusionment. Like nobody, you don't really feel like you can fully connect with any potential leader because you don't really understand what their clear action plan is or their clear message is around the issues that you care about. Um, so that's, that's, that's my theory. And that's, you know, not something that I've dug into too, too much. Um, but it's something that does definitely keep me up at night as well, kind of thinking about why, how do we really build, build enough salience and enough motivation to like really show up, get in that lineup, vote, really have your voice kind of be heard and, and, uh, and participate in, in politics, whether that's at a local or a, or a provincial or federal level. So um, I think if we can make that connection between messaging um, or between kind of priorities to the messaging and communications to build salience in the general public and with young people, I think that could go a long way. But um, I know that's not a small thing to <laughs> suggest. Well, thank you um, for that answer because I'm going to take that now and try to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but again, thank you so much for for joining me today. I, I learned a lot. At this such a, I feel like we could keep talking forever, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to <laughs> take up all of your day. Uh, so thanks again. Thanks so much, Phil. This was great.